Alrighty, 2004 Chevrolet Suburban. 107,146 miles on the clock, and it is here for a check engine light. Many, many of you will recognize this vehicle because not long ago I released an entire series of a complete suspension rebuild on the front end. I also did a video on an oil pan leaking. and a So we're gonna go in see what the codes are and i do believe they are knock sensor code is knock sensor one signal short slash low and knock sensor two signal short slash low we're going to pull that intake manifold off and we're going to visually inspect the knock sensors and the knock sensor wiring harnesses to uh, attempt to make a determination on uh, the next best course of actions so stay tuned this is going to be a very good video Okay, I've gone ahead and printed the uh, diagnostic tree out of all data. So let's review this before we start uh, pulling engines apart. Let's we'll see what we got here. So uh, yeah, we did a DTC system uh, system check. Oh, I'm falling on myself. Okay, step two, important. We're checking for mechanical noises of the engine. That's lifter knock, rod knock, uh, things of that nature. Um, we have not found any of those. Uh, just now I've gone through and checked out freeze frame records cleared the codes They did in fact reset on the next ignition cycle. So we have permission to move on to step two. That's a yes So let's go ahead pop the hood get underneath there. We're gonna remove the uh, Left engine sight shield. That's the uh, the beauty cover on top. We're gonna find the knock sensor connector uh, KS is gonna stand for knock sensor from this point forward we're gonna disconnect that jumper harness and we're going to bust out the multimeter and we are going to check that on the kilo ohm scale and uh, see what the resistance is. Um, we're going to assume, since I hear that those have new sensors and a new pigtail, we're going to assume that it's uh, those are okay, but when following the diag tree, we've gotta follow along step by step. Uh, we can trust, but we also must verify. So let's go ahead and bust out the meter check the resistance on the circuit and then we will go from there as per our instructions openings the hood okay so according to the instructions and memory the knock sensor harness uh, is on the left side of the intake manifold and i do believe this is it right here yeah there's the connector so let's go ahead and pop this guy off and give us some easier access to the components Okay, there's our connector. Let's disconnect this guy. This is the jumper harness right here. This looks like it's been replaced before. I see a splice down there and some electrical tape. Okay, so that, that is true with um, what our consumer has told us that uh, this has been replaced along with those sensors down below. Okay, the meter's powered up on resistance. Let's move this over here so we can get everything in one shot, or try to at least. Okay, this meter should auto range. Let's see what she does. We've got one pin there, one pin there, and we've got a value of 200 kilo ohms. Okay, so we're gonna chop that down, 200 kilo ohms. And it's asking us to, let's see, set it to a 400 ohm scale, my scale, or my meter auto ranges measure the resistance of the affected circuit yada 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 the value should be between 93 and 100 okay first thing's got to go is this intake tube there we go remove let's uh start pulling off things that are obstructing us i need to get to the wiring harnesses and disconnect those I've got to lose the uh, fuel lines are over there and um, uh, something else. Oh, some EVAP lines, those have to go too. Uh, one more bolt. Got to do that one manually. Okay, there's a, there's a map sensor connector, goodbye. Let's get rid of this clamp that holds on part of the harness. Well, we're not gonna get rid of it. We're just gonna take it loose, I think. What am I doing? Come on. Become unconnected. Am I doing this from the wrong side? Idiot. I think I am. It's my first day. No, seriously. What's, uh, oh, I see what I've done. 
There. Dang, it's super easy. Even I can do it. Next up, evap line. Hey, sorry if the camera's a little shaky every now and then. I have uh, one flexi mount attached to another flexi mount for added altitude. See this one. That's our alternator control circuitry. Get rid of that. Move that aside. Uh, we've got a throttle actuator connector on this side. Let's lose that. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, fuel lines. Gotta lose the fuel lines. Need more lumens. There. Hold up. Safety. Ah, oh, flashlight down. Lose the safety connectors and then go in and then uh, release the fuel lines. Okay, did a little bit of uh, zooming in there so we can see some long range action. Let's go ahead and disconnect. Is that shaky again? Let's disconnect these fuel lines, set them aside. Push and then pull. There's one. PCV line in the way. We'll move that over here. Become disconnected now without breaking. Got her. Sorry, I know you can't see. There. All right, fuel lines are off. We'll tuck those to the side and just kind of back there-ish. Keep them out of the way. And I next need to remove, looks like the fuel injector connectors. Uh, these are tough to see, so I'm just gonna pause the camera real quick like, and I'll be back once I get the injectors disconnected. Okay, all eight fuel injector connectors are removed. Uh, next up, I'm gonna pull this throttle body off. Um, it has coolant running through it and uh, I don't want to crack into the cooling system on this, so I'm just going to pull the whole throttle body off of the intake manifold. I believe it's uh, just three nuts that hold it on. So we'll do that next. If my wobbly bits are going to reach, <laughs> they might not be long enough. Oh, Peter doesn't know about the wobblies. You got to watch out for the wobbly bits. Yeah, this, this is my wobbly. It's kind of stubby, but... On a... On a half inch don't gas it with a wobbly bit on it no yeah no no oh no don't do that I did, I did that yeah well if you if you do that it might fly off and hit you in the nuts hey, you can't say that. Is... i'm talking about fasteners sir i don't know where your mind just went you don't ever want to hit your fasteners with your wobbly bits oh almost went through the matrix again caught it it fell down um, become not attached anymore, I think. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna have to take the cooling lines off this. I don't have enough clearance. Shnikes. Well, wait, no, I think I can do it. Yeah, I got it, it's off. Disconnected, it is. All right, so next on the hit list, I've got a uh, series of little eight millimeter bolts that bolt the intake manifold down i'm going to run through with an extension and another wobbly bit and pull those guys off then this manifold will be free and i can slip it out from this harness right here up and forward and that's going to give us access to the uh the intake valley and we can see what's going on with um with this knock sensor circuit which i also need to detach and put that aside because we'll be testing that again later Okay, time to run through and uh, unbolt this unit. And we're going to do that in uh, times two speed to save time. Soccer is just 
All right, let's scooch over here a little bit and change our dangly angle and move some lights and we'll get this other bank on this side. Sorry for the awkward and weird noises. It's the camera mount. Ow, stop it, stream light. There. I think I've, we'll get it. It's changing modes now, that's cute. I thought there was a rave going on on these. No, like, I ran this over the other day and it, it became, oh, look it. Right now it just, it went into like super party mode. <laughs> oh, it's, okay. I broke it. All right, just flashlight change. Time for a new one. Okay, new flashlight. Uh, where did I leave off? Second bolt, I think. Sure. Uh, I'm getting, space is getting a little tight. Give it back to me. I'm running out of uh, uh, my sight picture here. Visual. Um, we're safe, it hit the ground. surgeon but uh this looks okay i'm i'm suspecting there's an issue with the splice right here so uh i'm gonna open this up and take ourselves a peek inside and see what's going on with the splice okay um i just realized actually the moment when i saw this uh this harness that i actually made an error um i went back and checked uh check my diag tree and it, when i went to go measure resistance i uh, kind of did not read that it said check resistance from one of the pins to the ground and i ended up resist checking resistance between the two pins which was not good i should not have done that um, however i did get resistance between both of these see i was supposed to check one pin to ground and then the other pin to ground for the effective knock sensor and once i saw this harness I realized that each individual sensor has its uh, its own pin in this connector. And then there is a separate ground somewhere else uh, completing the circuit. So I actually uh, ran astray regarding this procedure. I just went back and re-ohmed each pin right here and I got 100.2 ohms out of both sides, which actually does put this within specification. Okay, so let us undo this reading um it was asking for ohming the affected 
uh, NOx sensors. Now both of those were affected. We had a code for each one and they both came in at roughly 100 ohms, which is, like I said, within spec. Uh, that changes our direction on the diag tree. So we no longer go to step six because we had a yes, we're going to step four. Step four is with the DMM still connected, set the DMM to 400 megavolts. All right, so what I've done, I've got this set up to hurt. Now watch here, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the engine block with the meter connected and it's gonna look for a resonant frequency uh, coming through those sensors. So here we go. Okay, so it looks like 33 hertz, 40. I'm gonna slow it down. The meter reflects that I did slow it down. Let's speed it up. Okay, so it is picking up on that particular sensor. Let's move the connector over to the next pin. And I'll repeat this testing procedure just to uh, witness the result here. And again, here we go. Let's slow it down. Okay, these all appear to be functioning. I did notice a difference between the two. One of them was a bit lower than the first, even though my tappy tapping was at the same frequency, approximately. Let's try it again. All right, yeah, that one jumped up. Let's go fast. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna give this one a passing grade on that particular test procedure. Yeah, that gives us authorization to move into step five. Disconnect the PCM. And we're gonna test the affected circuit uh, between the PCM and the jumper harness. So we're going from this connector here to its counterpart connector on the PCM. And we're gonna be looking for an open, short to ground, short to voltage, or high resistance. So we need to go ahead and meter both ends of that wire what we're doing is checking for a fault in the wiring that's in the harness itself okay i've got the cover off this uh, ecm and it uh, does in fact appear to have been replaced with a new unit so uh, let's get this thing detached and disconnected and go ahead and take a get the uh what you call them the harnesses disconnected and we're going to check resistance values between the appropriate pin on the connectors and the knock sensor jumper harness connector over here Okay, I busted out the diagrams for this one. So we've got both knock sensors here and here. We're looking at them right there. They are grounded to the engine block, so there is no ground anywhere. Uh, we've got two independent circuits that go back to the ECM. Uh, we've got number three, which is dark blue colored, and we've got circuit 18, which is light blue colored. Uh, we confirm this just based on the colors of the wiring harness. And moving over, we're gonna follow them to the next paper, back to circuit 18, which is light blue. Uh, no, I'm not left-handed. And uh, what was the other one? 23, 23, 23, 23, which is the dark blue. This is correct. So I wish this was in color, but our printer sucks. So we follow this over. We're looking for circuit 496, also dark blue. It says it right here, KS signal. My left-handed circles are terrible. And again, circuit 18, looks like we're a straight line back to the ECM, and here we go. Circuit 18, which is numbered circuit 1876, light blue, and it looks like that's number 11, and it knocks sensor signal. So we're going to open up the connectors on this ECM, and we're gonna check for resistance and or continuity between this pin and its corresponding sensor. We'll do the same for this pin and its corresponding sensor, which is gonna be from this pin to whichever pin is here, and then this pin to whichever pin is here. So pull this guy off, open up these connectors and see what's going on inside of here. Now, although I did misread my instructions and go a little sideways on this, uh, that's okay. It only took me 10, 15 minutes to do this. Um, I can afford that kind of time, so uh, there will be no re-needed about you're doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing because I'm diagnosing and I can technically kind of do that any way I want. So uh, uh, if you got a problem with that, sorry about your luck, stay in your lane, that's the way I decided to do it. I've recognized my mistake, I made up for it, I got myself back on track, so we're good to go, so uh, don't worry about it. 
you'll be okay. Okay, that being said, let's go ahead and get these connectors off of the ECM. Unfortunately, due to the fact that this thing is loaded with brand new parts, I can reasonably eliminate certain components as being failure prone and probable for the, for the issue here. So I don't believe it has a faulty PCM and I don't believe it has faulty sensors. And I also don't believe uh, that I can get this off. Why are you stuck? I also don't believe that it has a faulty uh, pigtail or connection somewhere. Okay, there's one removed. Hmm, it's not unbolted all the way. Let's give it a little more. There we go. Now, since someone has been here, let's go ahead and take a peek inside, make sure all the pins are straight. Yes, those look good. So we'll set this computer aside, a place where it won't fall down. We will inspect all the pins on the connectors as well. These all look good. A bit of dirt in that one. Shouldn't have been a problem. Okay, uh, let's figure out which uh, which one of these wires is the mate to the pigtail connector over here on the harness, and we'll check the resistance of those specific circuits. Okay, so I have identified pin 51 right here, and pin 11 is on the other side. So we follow this around, and we've got 51 and 11. What we're going to do is check for continuity first between 51 and 11 and its corresponding pins over here on uh, on the connector for the knock sensors so we're gonna plug that guy in right there and I've got this hooked up to some jumper wires which is connected to the meter uh, first things first we're gonna make sure the connections at the meter are functioning as designed so I'll set that up for an audible continuity when we hear the beep, we know that the meter and the jumper leads are connected together properly. So we got a beep out of it. Let's check it one more time because that was a rhythmic beep. Okay, so that's testing out our leads. Now, let's check for some continuity at the PCM connectors. Uh, let's see, I need more light. I'm running out of illumination here, 51. I don't know which one is which, but we'll find out in a second. Okay, we have continuity on that circuit that's probably knock sensor one let's move it down to 11. all right so there's no continuity at 11. that means that there is not a short uh, of the two wires somewhere in the harness now we're going to switch over because we're on pin 11 now at the, at the pcm connector let's move this over to the next one bam we've got continuity okay so now that we've established there is continuity let's reset the meter and we're going to check resistance we'll do that as live as i can we've got half an ohm resistance on one circuit good let's switch over to the next one and we'll go ahead and swap the pin over and check resistance of that circuit and looking like 0.4 ohms okay Let's do a, uh, a short to ground check. So I'll just go ahead and pull this guy out. We'll ground it on a known good ground or OL. Let's switch over to the next circuit and we'll check that one towards ground. Again, the meter is OL. So let's switch that to continuity just in case and nothing. So there's no resistance and no continuity to ground on either circuit. The resistance of this circuit is good from the ECM to the connector. We can uh, continue assuming that this is a good ECM because it is in fact uh, brand new. It doesn't even have any road grime on it. So uh, that um, this poses a problem here, uh, meaning we're off track regarding this diagnostic process and we are, we're very off track here because if we follow the tree through uh, let's see we're test well we didn't test for intermittent or poor connections at the knock sensor jumper harness um, 
visually inspecting those pins, I don't believe that there's a poor connection. And likewise, regarding the pins at 51 and number 11, those look good. I don't know if it's focusing, but both of those pins look very good. Uh, I don't think that that's where the issue is located. Um, let's see, we checked for poor connections at the PCM. Uh, let's back up real quick. Kind of just review and start over one more time. So we had a, a Hertz reading when I manually tappy tapped on it. Disconnected the PCM. We checked for shorts, grounds, voltages, and everything else. High resistance in the circuit. We did not find that condition. Answer is no. So that takes us to step eight. Going back to step eight, intermittent poor connections. I don't think we have that, especially since both knock sensors are coding and they're doing it simultaneously. That's that's the uh, the key here that's going to help us figure this out. So we have one thing causing both of the DTCs to set and that one thing is not connections to the PCM and it's also not the PCM. So since we're going to go with the assumption that this is a no, that tells us to go to step 11, it says replace PCM. Now that's already been done. So it's saying is the action complete? Yes, go to step 12, clear the DTCs, turn the engine off, wait 30 seconds, restart it, operate the conditions, which is basically just driving it, and then does the DTC fail on any of those ignition cycles? Uh, yes, it does fail because it has, um, according to the consumer, had multiple failures on this exact same thing. That's why we, they started off with sensors, then they moved to the connection, then they ended up moving to an ECM. So it has mul failed multiple times. Uh, what it does is it circles us back around to the beginning over here to step two. So now I'm stumped. Um, we've exhausted the extent of all the diagnostic procedures here. The only thing that we're missing is if an engine knock is actually present. Now, I have not heard one and the customer has not heard one. Um, I have taken this vehicle on a test drive before listening for uh, pre-ignition, pinging, spark knocking, engine knocking, etc., lifter noises, and none of that stuff was observed. So I'm really not certain on uh, what to do next. It's, it's kind of time to All right, it. so I put the ECM and everything back together. Uh, I'm certain that I do not have a wiring problem here. Um, I, I do not know what kind of problem we do have. I'm super frustrated with this car. I continue to go through the diagnostic procedure. Everything is testing out as operating as designed. My diagnostic flow chart tells me that I have to replace this PCM and that that really bothers me because this PCM has already been replaced because of this issue and so I know my flow chart's wrong because the odds of getting a remanufactured PCM that has the exact same fault as the PCM that came back out of it are 100% astronomical there's just no way applying logic and critical thinking that that PCM has the same failure as the old one. I mean, it's possible, but it's so, so highly unlikely. And so I'm over here beating my head against the wall. I'm super frustrated. Can't figure out what it is because I know it's not the wires. I know it's not the jumper harness. The sensors that are installed here have the correct resistance and they're producing an AC frequency measurable in Hertz with the multimeter. Theoretically, the whole system is working, therefore the flowchart says the PCM is bad and I'm not buying it. And I've learned over the years that when I'm stuck, I'm overlooking a doo 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 doo. Okay, I'm overlooking something simple. Doo doo doo. Seeing as I don't have any history on this engine or this concern with this particular car, I don't know what I'm overlooking, so I've got to, I had to kind of clear my head, restart my thought process. So I go, everything tests out, but maybe there's an installation error. Perhaps uh, the fella that put, um, uh, put those other knock sensors in, Teflon tape the, uh, the threaded area, and it's messing with these particular sensors. I know whatever happened, it happened to both circuits. Now, whether that's both sensors or both circuits, uh, it happened at the same time uh, during the same event. That being said, since I've proved out that the circuit is functioning as designed over and over and over again, 
I have to question whether the install of these sensors was accurate. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to pull these guys out and uh, see if, if maybe there's Teflon tape on it or um, you know, one of them broke into something. I, I've just, that's the only thing I haven't taken apart completely are those particular sensors. I, I really had no reason to, but since I'm stuck in a corner on this, I have a, really no option except to pull those out and, uh, and see what type of condition they're in. So that being said, let's, uh, let's pull these things out and just uh, take a look down in their, in their holes there. Let's check out the threads and uh, just see if there's any obvious defects regarding these sensors. And then we can go from there. I'm sure hoping I find something because if I don't, then I don't know where to go from there. I've, I've really got no place to go at this point. So, without any further explanation, let's get these guys apart. Feels weird. What? Feels very weird. Check this out. I can see it from here. Well, I see something from here. Hang on, more lumens. You can see the sensor body on the outside, and then there's the core on the inside. that the body does not turn oh no but the sensor does turn um i wonder if we're onto something here Do -do -do. maybe these guys were over torqued and it broke the crystal inside okay now i gotta figure out how to get that out hmm maybe if i stake the edges again with like a, a punch or a pry bar or something It'll have enough friction to uh, to break that thing loose. I think I'll try that. Oh, we're committed now. Hmm. I'll try to stake it with this uh, chisel right here. Just to get the uh, body to pinch the inside enough to break it loose from its threads. Regardless of whether these are the problem or not, it's getting new sensors. That didn't work. Okay, that front one's no good. Let's try the rear one real quick. Just to see, try to get it out. Oh, same condition. Yep, I feel it slipping. This is actually not good. This is, I think I found the problem. But uh, this is bad because I don't know if I can even get these guys out. This may be a bigger job than uh, what I thought it was going to be. Okay, so I'm not I'm not really certain if I can get this uh, this intake cover removed with those sensors installed. I actually think that those have to come out first. But um, since these are about three inches down and I can't really get a tool on them, at least not on a part that's gonna help me out, I'm gonna try to take this cover off and then uh, see if that'll give me some better access to those knock sensors. I don't think I, it's gonna work. And I may have to get into a area where I have to start breaking things to get these guys to come out, which I don't really want to. But like I said, we're uh, <laughs> I'm kind of committed at this point. So let's see. Let's get all these bolts out of here so we don't lose them. Let's see if these guys, if this is gonna come out. Well, it comes loose. When is it gonna come out? I don't think so. No, the sensors have to come out to get get that out. That's uh, that sucks. Well, I'm gonna have to uh, begin uh, violently destroying things to get this out. I may end up breaking this little center cover thing right here. Oh, woe is me. Maybe I can break the sensor off and, 
extract it later. I'm just afraid I'm gonna break the cover. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. Let's keep bending it around until it breaks. That's what I would do if it were mine. Okay, well, oh, that one's broken. Let's get the next one out. Oh, what a nightmare this has turned into. mean that. It's kind of broken. Oh, Alright, climbing around. Yeah, I'm just bending it back and forth. Eventually it will fatigue and snap. I feel it getting loose now. I should have told myself two days ago, new doesn't mean good, it just means it's not used. I ignored my own adage and paid the price. Nope, not broken enough. More breaking. Okay. No leaf. Get out of here. Here's the next problem. Right here are the bosses that those sensors screw into. See the new one right there? They'll screw into a threaded portion of the block right here. These guys are so tight, they don't want to come out of the engine block. And I have to get them out of the engine block, so I may have to uh, either drill those out and use an easy outer. Okay, we're going to try to drill these first and then uh, Pull them out with an extractor. Let's see how this is gonna work out. We'll center punch it. Or not. You piece of center punch. Show you. There, we'll center punch it. It's like not even centered. Fail. And to begin drilling is the aluminum. Now these bits are reverse threaded, so I have to drill in reverse. Let's see how this works out. Am I going the right way? No. Now I'm going the wrong way, which is the right way. All right, you go there, please. Let's do this. Drill bits are crap. Oh, I hate borrowed tools. Let's try this again with a standard drill bit. Bit bigger. 
All right, so I got a feeling this is gonna take a while, so we're gonna speed things up. Okay, I think I saw this move when I was drilling it. So I'm hoping it broke free enough to come out. Let's, let's try it. Hey, something turned. Ooh, did I win? Did I win? Let's find out. Need more lumens. I think I won. I think I got it. Oh yeah, it's coming out. Yes. Mm. There it is. See it. I broke through the threads right here and that's how it uh, was able to relieve the pressure on the threads and ultimately unscrew. All right, there's one. Let's do this again on the back side. All right, I gotta do a little bit of climbing to get back here to this rear one. Kind of awkward-ish. This center punch is a piece of junk. Harbor Freight, what are you gonna do? Okay, I need to figure out how to sit down here so I can, so I can get this done. Let's try a fresh bit, that bit sucked. There we go. Look at that. Much more better. -er. Mm. All right, let's give it a shot. See if it comes out. Uh oh. Well, the top half came out. Uh, now I've got to figure out how to get the threaded section out. That's uh, not what I wanted to happen. Okay, well, the only thing I can do is drill a smaller hole and then put a reverse thread easy out in it to try to unthread that uh, threaded portion that's still in the block. cluster this is. Well, if I wasn't doing rocket surgery on a Mercedes a couple days ago, I sure am now. Gonna need as much lube as we can get. Okay, this is the smallest extractor that I have, and that's that's too small. It won't even uh, won't even bite. Got an idea. Let's use a sacrificial Torx bit. They're multi-sided and fairly sharp. Oh yeah, here we go. It's coming out. 
I've also done such things with little pocket screwdrivers. Here it comes. That's what I'm talking about. Whew. Well, that worked, okay. I need to clean all this up and pay particular attention to metal shaving contaminants in the engine because wouldn't that suck to blow up an engine after all this work? I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, we need to get all this cleaned out. Then I can uh, get rid of the rest of these leaves, pull my intake runner plugs out. Um, I have a new gasket ordered for this uh, this cover right here. And then I'll put those, uh, those new knock sensors in there uh, with the appropriate torque. And uh, then we'll retest and see if it still continues to set that DTC. Okay, let's clean this mess out of here with said vacuum. Out of here. Come on, metal shavings. Come out. All right, time for some spray and some wiping down action. You guys hate this. It's the only way to ensure maximum debris removal. Bad noise. next towel out and I'm pulling it up and away from the hole that way in case there's anything on the towel it does not fall down into the oil pan yep look at that a couple chunks right here those were stuck in the towel get these guys out I'll put another towel back in those holes and then blow it out again This is safe to reassemble now, I think. Let's just give this a quick wipe down and we'll put the plate on with a new gasket. It also has new seals for each one of the knock sensors. Nice and shiny. Oh, flashlight down. And we gotta slip these over the little little risers down in the valley 
Hmm. Perhaps they need some lubricant. Yes, they do. Doo -doo -doo. Nice. It slides so much easier with just a wee bit of lube. Gravity. Reach. A little more. There we go. Run these guys down and apply some torque. Okay, all data does not seem to have a torque spec list for this, so we're gonna do this at 20 foot pounds. That seems reasonable. Okay, so since torque is so low, I've got to use my quarter inch torque wrench, but the fastener is so large, which is a 22 millimeter. And I don't have one of these in 3 8 or half inch drive, so, or a 3 8 and quarter inch drive, so I used my half inch socket with an adapter with an adapter. So we double step the adapters. Whoa, don't want to drop that and break it. That would suck. So we're just gonna thread these guys in and torque them to the 15 foot-pound specified amount. And I will install a new wiring jumper harness while I'm here because I'm not doing this again. All right, here we go. Click. That is all. Got it. What is he babbling about? Well, you guys know what I say about Florida. We're all here because we're not all there. These are facts. And... Click. That's it. Now there was an old service bulletin where you were supposed to build a, a dam of RTV sealant around this to keep water from getting in and filling up these holes and causing these sensors to rust. Um, since we've broken the seal by removing the, uh, the wiring harness out of these holes, I'm gonna reapply some silicone. And since we used red the first time, I will use red again the second time. Because why not? And it's just gonna be a little bead of sealant running all the way around on both holes. I was wondering if I was ever going to open up this tube of red silicone right here. I usually use black because it's oil resistant. There. Whoa, don't do that. I don't want to smear my schmoo. Connect, please. Got it, okay. There's one. Oh, almost. There you stay. There we go. Nice.
And the second one. They look kind of ugly, so I'll smear it around some so it's more prettier. Again, we're just trying to keep water from migrating its way into those holes and causing the sensors to rust. The air pressure from behind the obstructions will blow it out and not in. These intake gaskets are Felpro and are reusable, therefore they will be reused. Next. go those are all set up now I can get that intake back and uh, we will see what kind of a difference we got with these new sensors in this new connector to tell you the truth I'm about 50 50 on this one because according to the multimeter the sensors that were in here should have been functioning and uh, they weren't so we will see I think I got it but I'm not hundred percent certain this has been a very weird experience on this particular vehicle. Okay, moment of truth time. It lives. Now we've got to let it come up to operating temperature. And once it's at operating temp, I've got to bring RPMs past 1500. So between 15 and 2000 or so. Um, 1500 is the minimum criteria for uh, the monitor to run for the NOx sensors. So I'll check back in once this thing reaches temp. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, don't worry it'll just take a nanosecond just like so and once that happens we will watch the scan tool live because the tech 2 will update trouble codes instantly once they're set or pending and as soon as we're at temp we'll go ahead hop in raise rpms up monitor the scanner and we're going to see if they uh if they set um if they don't set we can manually look up in the scan tool the DTC definitions and it will tell us if the monitor has run or has not run now this has no history of these monitors passing so if we get a pass after it's run then we will know we have a confirmed fix all right I'm kind of done waiting let's see if we have enough coolant temp for the monitor to run so we're gonna idle this up to about 1800 or so and we're gonna look up, let's go with uh, P0332. So we're gonna have it check the monitor status for 0332. Enter. Ha ha! The monitor has passed. Yo, somebody did good work on this. That's fantastic. All right, let's check out uh, 327. Specific DTC. Zero, where are you? Zero, three, two, seven. Yes, victory. Finally, after two days of tinkering, headaches, repetition of troubleshooting procedures, I found my oversight, corrected the problem. I don't know if this is a victory or a failure. I think I'll call it a successful failure, like the Apollo 13 mission. But it passed it passed its monitor so let's uh let's just go in and make sure there's no pending dtcs there won't be nope finally the mystery has been solved okay i'm gonna get my goodies out of here uh take this on one finalized test drive um i'm supremely confident that the issue has been solved and this car is finally fixed there will be no more check engine light that being said as always I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video Certainly appreciate you hanging in here to the very bitter end. The only thing I would ask of you is that if you like this video, please communicate that to me effectively by happy tapping our thumbs up button down below. And don't forget to drop me a comment or two while you're down there.
all that being said, again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day.